Khabib Nurmagomedov versus Conor McGregor. Now, what really happened in this fight? This is a very one-sided fight. Domination by Khabib Nurmagomedov. Where he uses strengths in his grappling, in his wrestling early on in the fight. And they mix it up with his striking and outstruck the striker in this fight. He used the threat of his takedowns as a weapon to allow him to strike with his opponent. He's used this before. The threat of his takedowns allow himself to strike with strikers like Edson Barboza, like Michael Johnson, and now like here with Conor McGregor, because they're always worried about that takedown. But early on in the fight, Khabib showed him that. And Khabib's game plan was to get Conor away from 100% as fast as possible, carefully though, instead of rushing in carelessly. And he did this very well with a tactic in the first 15 seconds of the fight. And to get Conor out of 100%, you got to get him out of the first round and make him work. Especially with grappling. Because Conor is a striker, he's going to have better striking cardio than he will grappling cardio. So Habib in the first round, he's going to have to shoot in on Conor, make him work. And then every single round, Conor fades a little bit more and a little bit more. So in the first round, he's going to be like 100%. In the second round, he'll be 80. Third round, he'll be 60. Then 40% after that. And that's when Khabib is going to start risking a lot more things. And find his openings maybe in the striking like he did later in the fight. As well as forcing Conor to mentally and physically break throughout the fight. So what did Khabib do early in the fight? That allowed himself to get that takedown on Conor right away. And what does he usually just have to do in general? He's done it to Michael Johnson and he's done it to many other fighters. He wants to find the timing, the range, and the speed and the strikes on the feet. He did this exact same thing to Johnson. Johnson is also a left-handed fighter with very fast hands and a devastating left straight. And Khabib allowed Johnson to be the assertive fighter in the fight for the first minute or so to find out the timing of Johnson. He did the same thing here with Conor McGregor. So then he can confidently get in for the takedown more carefully. So Conor McGregor takes the center of the cage and Khabib starts moving. Everybody forgets that Khabib is a mover. He has elusive movements. He's never standing still. And this usually will play into Conor's favor where he's pressuring the fighter backwards and he traps them. And that's exactly what he tries to do to Khabib. He keeps the outside foot the entire time. And Khabib is moving away from the left hand. He's trying to find out that left hand whenever Conor is going to throw it and feel it out. And Conor loves when opponents do this to him. He has developed a game of landing left hands as opponents move away from it. He's able to step on the outside, he's able to step in behind a mask, force the opponent to extend at him, and then he torques his left hand across his body. He's landed this a lot on Chad Mendes. So Connor goes and throws a very slight jab, just to see the reaction of Khabib and figure out the distance. And Khabib throws a check left hook. This is a punch he uses later in the fight and actually catches Connor, but here he misses. Connor caught the reaction here. And you can notice Connor had no worry about this left hook of Khabib. Now, this is a scary place for Khabib because he has elusive footwork and Connor got Khabib to plant himself. So, what does Connor do? He has no worry for the left hook and you can see him continuously move forward behind his jab. He's masking in a step behind it to cover more distance so the opponent gets surprised by the distance he covered for that left hand. And you can see he puts his right hand around Khabib. He has the outside foot, right hand on the outside of Khabib, so he's kind of creating this barrier and trapping Khabib in a space. He's bubbling him in for that left hand. And look where Khabib's head is. Note where his head is at. And Connor goes and throws the left hand. And what does Khabib do? Khabib moves his head on the right side, on the outside of the punch. This is something nobody does to Connor. Connor forces opponents to move to their left, which is his right. That's what he was looking for Khabib to do here. Khabib stopped moving to the left, moved back, and then moved his head to the right. So his direction was more so to the right now. And threw off Connor's precision here. And you can see the force of the punch. The momentum of the punch from Connor carried himself forward. There was a lot of power in this punch. Showed you that Connor is really loading up on these shots to hurt Khabib. And even throughout the entire fight, Connor was really loading up on almost all his shots. But this allowed Khabib to gain some distance. Because when Connor throws that left hand and the fact that he threw his body forward behind the punch, it allowed Khabib to create some distance from Connor in that split second. So Khabib felt that punch. He felt the speed of the punch. He felt what Connor's trying to do. He felt the distance Connor throws it. So now what Khabib does, this is a very intelligent move from Khabib. He starts moving to his right as Connor cuts off the octagon. He starts moving into the left side, the power side of Connor. This can also be very dangerous. And what Khabib is trying to do here, he's trying to force out the left side of Connor. He's trying to force out a kick or a punch from Connor to intercept him. And why is he doing this? Why did he move all of a sudden into Connor's power side? He knows that Connor's trapping him. He knows that Connor coughed the octagon effectively on him. He knows this is not the best situation for him to be in. So he had to force himself out of this. He had to get away from the cage and away from Connor's pressure and get it back to the center of the octagon or 
to the point where he could start pressuring Connor. So he's gonna force out Connor's left side. Whenever Connor throws his left side, he usually throws it and lingers his shots, which allows the opponent to move if he misses the shot. Khabib slightly but suddenly moves at Connor or toward Connor's direction with just a simple movement and he shows him his right hand. So now Connor looks to intercept Khabib. And you can see Connor loads up that left leg. He doesn't set it up, he doesn't mask it, he doesn't hide the fact that he's gonna throw the left kick. And you can see he puts a lot of weight on it because he puts his heel down. He's never on his heel with his back foot, right? It's always on the ball on the foot, but he puts a lot of weight on it, loads it up. Khabib easily sees it. It's very obvious. And when he does it, notice Khabib's stance, how it changes. His right foot moves further out, which squares his body. This instantly tells you he's going to redirect to his left. He sees the kick coming. He moves out away from the kick and kind of threw a lot of power in this kick. Khabib moves away from it, and Connor, the fact that he's throwing a high kick, he's not going to be able to move right away. He has to retract the kick and then move. Khabib is going to be able to move faster than Connor is here, which allows him to get away from the cage, away from the kick, and away from Connor's pressure, get it back to the center of the octagon. This was an absolute excellent movement tactic by Khabib. He got what he wanted and he got out unscathed. He found out the timing of Connor, he found the range, especially, and the speed. Now he's a lot more confident to shoot in on Connor. Now it's time for him to start his game plan. Instantly, immediately when he gets to the center of the cage, he shoots in on Connor. Immediately, does not even give it a second thought. Very fast shot, but he shot from a very far distance. And he shoots that famous low single of his on that wide stance. But Connor did something he doesn't normally do to single legs. We've seen Eddie Alvarez shoot him for single legs. We've seen Chad Mendes shoot him for single legs. Or at least they shot him for a double leg, starting with the lead leg of Connor. But he was always very quick to pull back his lead leg away from the opponent, which forces him to extend even further. And he's able to defend the shot a lot better. He uses the footwork as his takedown defense. Here, there was no footwork. This I've never seen Connor do. He tries to throw and intercept Khabib with a knee. This could be very devastating if it catches Khabib. But when you throw a knee like this, you plant yourself where you're at. So this is a risky intercepting shot from Conor McGregor. Either he's going to catch Khabib and KO him, or Khabib's going to get this takedown. Conor gambled here. And the fact that he wanted to throw the knee, it showed that he didn't take the cerebral approach that he usually does. A very calculated approach to set up his shots throughout the fight and force things on the opponent. He wanted to fight very lethal here. Everything he tried to do was to hurt Khabib. And the knee actually seems to have caught Khabib because you do see his head move a little bit to the left. But you do see the knee go past the shoulder of Khabib. So it probably didn't hit the shoulder. It could have hit, it could have hit the trap of Khabib, the neck of Khabib. Could have hit like his jaw or something like that. Either way, that hurts. But if he did take it to the head or even to the upper neck, that could be pretty devastating. And if he did take it, his ability to absorb the shot is pretty insane. But I think it landed toward the neck and toward the trap because his head didn't really rattle that much as, as it would if it hit his head. The blow redirects Khabib a little bit, kind of gets a single leg off. You can see he gets really low on Connor, and Connor is still quick to keep that lead leg away. Look how his hips completely shift. When he threw the knee, it also forced his hips to shift as well, and it created more distance for Khabib to grab the leg. He grabbed it very, very low. And then Connor tried to wrap himself around Khabib over the top. This is when Khabib was given an opportunity to start working more. A better thing for Connor to do to get this eventually back up to the feet would be pushing down the head of Khabib. Don't allow him to elevate or posture up. Holding that position, forcing him to the ground, and work to slip his leg away from Khabib's grip because Khabib doesn't have the strongest grip he can have with this position. Khabib lifted him and he has control of the ankle of Connor. He needs a higher grip to get working, to get more effective with the takedown. So when he lifted Connor and got Connor to his side a little bit more, he's able to grab a grip under the knee of Connor, under the thigh, and this is what he wanted. Now he has that single. Connor's using the butt drag and he's also wrapping around Khabib on the right side, trying to hold this position and try to keep balance. Khabib gets really deep on that single leg as Connor is continuously trying to grapple with Khabib and trying to go over him. He should be trying to get away from Khabib instead of trying to get over him. He's playing Khabib's game. And the place I know a lot of people watching were kind of surprised when Connor got almost on top of Khabib here. When Khabib was trying to turn the corner with the single leg and try to dump Connor, Connor was holding on to the butt drag. Could have been an oil check, I don't know. Could have been grabbing the shorts as well. I don't know if he was doing it here, but he was also pushing down the head of Khabib on the right side, relieving a lot of the pressure as well as the leverage of Khabib to force his weight on top of Connor. And Connor was keeping his right leg on the inside of himself on the right side of Khabib. 
Khabib didn't really have the best grip here and the best leverage. Connor did a very good job defending this takedown. And when Khabib really tried to force the single leg takedown, Connor pushing down his head and with the butt drag, he was able to grip himself over Khabib. He was able to rebound off the ground and get on top of Khabib for a second. And Khabib only had one arm around Connor. This looked very bad for Khabib. And Connor almost looked like he was going to get Khabib's back or at least get full mount on him. But Khabib's strength is something that's out of this world. Just with that one arm, he's able to literally drag and pull Connor in front of him. You can see Connor trying to pulse and he's trying to keep his position. But Khabib literally lifts him and rotates him on top of himself. So he can get Connor in front of him, get his leg in front of him so he can reach with his left arm around the leg and get that single leg again. And then Khabib is able to get Connor back to his feet. He's trying to work the single leg again and Connor's doing the same thing, but he's not pushing down the head as much as he's framing on it with his forearm. He's creating like a barrier on Khabib's head between himself and Khabib. And he's also using it to push down Khabib's head a little bit. But notice what he's doing with his left arm. He's grabbing the shorts of Khabib. Now it's not a butt drag. He's literally grabbing the shorts. This is something you can't do in MMA. And Herb Dean, I'm very surprised you didn't see this. I mean, they were rotating around and Herb Dean was able to see this like three spins in a row. And he never saw it. Now he'll be fixed his mistake. He's able to put his weight on the inside of Connor's thigh, forcing him that direction away from the balancing leg of Connor, which is his left leg. Dump him to that side. Connor's holding on the shorts still, framing on the head of Khabib. And the reason why Khabib was able to do this a lot better, look where Khabib's head came up. Remember when Connor had his hand on the back of the head of Khabib and forcing it down? This is why he was doing that. He didn't want Khabib to get his head up and use that leverage on top of him. And with that, with all the force on the inside of Connor's thigh, with the shoulder of Khabib and forcing him down, Khabib was able to rotate his right leg around Connor's right leg and get Connor's right leg on the inside of both of Khabib's so he can trap it under him. So Connor cannot escape like he did last time. You could see Connor was trying to escape again. He's trying to get around Khabib again, but his right leg is trapped. His left leg was free, and he's trying to create as much space as possible, still holding on the shorts of Khabib. But the inevitable double leg takedown of Khabib is there. He's able to get his right arm around Connor's left hip, forcing Connor to focus on the double leg now, but he forgot about Khabib's head. Khabib's still trying to get his head on the right side of Connor. So he can drive the takedown a lot more. And he was able to because Connor lifted his right arm off of Khabib's head. He let go of Khabib's shorts with his left arm to post to keep himself balanced. But at this point, it didn't matter. Able to get around Connor's hips and force him to the cage. Now the game plan is set. Now he just works on Connor, doesn't do as much damage as he can, but just tries to work Connor and wear him out. And when the second round came, you start to see Connor breathing a little bit. You see him definitely not 100% anymore. His shots got a little bit more sluggish and a lot slower to the point where Khabib was a lot more confident to mix it with Connor on the feet. And you can see Khabib by that first sequence in the fight, in the first 15 seconds where Connor threw the left hand, Khabib figured out Connor's distance right there and then for the entire fight for that left hand of Connor. Because you see in the second round, toward the beginning of the round, 15 seconds in, again Connor was able to pressure Khabib backwards and get in the center of the octagon, forcing Khabib to move. And what does Khabib do? He moves to his right again, forcing out the left hand of Connor. And what does Connor do? He throws a Superman punch. Really extends for it. But the way he's throwing this left hand, when he throws it that powerful, he lingers it and he exposes himself. He overextends himself. And look at the distance Khabib is so confident to move with Connor's punch. He has Connor's distance down, didn't overreact, just moved slightly out of the range of the punch and lands a check left hook on Connor. And what does Connor do? He goes and tries to follow up with a flying knee. This is actually a pretty good linear straight line combination, but Khabib doesn't move in straight lines. A lot of lateral movements from Khabib. So Khabib, when he throws that check left hook, catches Connor, Connor throws the flying knee. Khabib bounces and rebounds off the cage and moves out and redirects to his left again. So he moved initially to his right, backed up, and then redirected to his left, away from the left side of Connor. And what happened here, again, very similar to the first round, Connor ran into the cage, allowing Khabib to escape the cage again, and escape Connor's pressure again. Him moving to the right, forcing out Connor's left shots, and then redirecting to his left, is completely throwing off Connor's pressuring game. Khabib is really confident in his speed, and his speed in this fight is something nobody expected. His footwork speed, his punching speed, his countering speed, his reactions, everything about Khabib's speed is shocking. And it should never be underestimated. He got Connor's distance down, he got Connor's speed down. Connor seems a lot slower than Khabib, especially in the second round. And then Khabib goes for it. He goes for that right overhand. The famous knockdown on Connor McGregor. 
And this right overhand tells a lot about this fight. Khabib goes and ducks, creates momentum for his right overhand with absolute blinding speed. And that right overhand, the way Khabib was able to move that quick, it was the fastest I've ever seen Khabib throw a punch and move in to throw a punch. It was like they played Khabib in fast motion and kept Connor at normal speed. So when he goes and ducks, you can see Connor actually leans forward with his upper body, and you can see he moves his hips and right leg back. He automatically thinks this is going to be a takedown. And what happens when you do that? You bring your hands down a little bit, you lean your upper body forward, and you bring your legs and hips back slightly. You leave your chin exposed, and you don't expect the punch. He did this all before noticing the punch of Khabib. The threat of the takedown from Khabib was massive in this fight. It was very threatening to Connor. Khabib ducking gave Connor the illusion of the takedown, which is obviously a huge threat in the entire fight for Connor. But this may have also played in the mental factor of Connor, where he denounced Khabib striking completely and only focused on Khabib's takedowns as the only real threat to him. He took a lot of the focus off the striking of Khabib and put a lot of the attention on the takedowns, massive confidence in his striking, but actually more so an underestimation of Khabib striking created this illusion for Connor and caused Khabib's overhand to land clean. After this right overhand, Khabib had to have gotten Connor's attention on his striking. And for that, this has to be such an anxious and uneasy moment for Conor McGregor for the rest of the fight. Because playing the entire time prior to the fight that your opponent's striking is subpar, which is Connor's best area, and the only focus is going to be on the wrestling and grappling, to now, inside of the second round of the actual fight, you must respect and recalculate your assumptions slash strategy of the fight. This must be such a tough position for Connor and an awesome situation for Khabib. You can't underestimate your opponent. Connor continuously said before this fight, he's experienced now. How many times did he say that? I'm experienced now. But he continuously underestimated an aspect of Khabib's game, which now became his undoing. And now he has to add factors into his approach mid-fight. Now he has to handle these other aspects he didn't prepare for inside of the fight that he's losing. And this is an extremely difficult position that Connor put himself in. Khabib, to his credit, never underestimated Connor and always said he wasn't. He was confident in the skills and respected Connor. He was confident in his skills, but he also respected Connor's skills. Connor was confident in his skills, but he underplayed Khabib's. After going through the Nate Diaz fights, it's a bit surprising that he underestimated his opponent yet again. And the speed of Khabib is something to even this day, I am still shocked by. That punch is the fastest I've ever seen Khabib move. It almost looked like it didn't fit him. It's amazing to see how fast Khabib was able to land that right overhand. Connor, though, the way he recovered from the punch, he got dropped. He got hit hard by Khabib. But Connor was moving away from Khabib very intelligently. He wasn't standing up. He didn't get on all fours. He was scooting away from Khabib, and he scooted away pretty quickly. And when it got to the ground in the second round, Khabib was able to shoot in on Connor when he got close to the cage and take him to the ground. Whenever Connor got his back to the cage, as we all know from Khabib, he does it to literally every single guy he fights. Whenever they get past those two lines toward the cage and he's pressuring, he shoots in against the cage every single time. He did it in this fight as well. And he was able to get Connor to the ground and land absolute hammers on top of Connor. But what is there to note? Connor has an excellent ability to keep guard. He kept guard on Khabib in the second round after getting hurt. That is impressive from Connor. I said in my pre fight breakdown, Connor does have an amazing ability to hold guard. He did it to almost everybody he's ever fought. And to keep it on Khabib after getting hammered on top, that's impressive. And Khabib actually didn't land all of the shots. He definitely landed some big shots on Connor. Some of them got through, but Connor was able to keep his guard up and keep composure under these shots. He didn't let him get to him. And the most impressive thing was. Even some of the shots were breaking the guard or they were getting through and hitting Connor or some of them were hitting the ground. Connor always kept his feet on Khabib's hips, keeping him from passing the guard into side control or something for a very long time until Khabib decided to back up away from Connor and hold his left leg so he can control it and pass around it as he's still holding on to it. And then he was able to get into side control on Connor. Connor did do some dirty things such as keeping his toes in the cage when he wasn't supposed to. And Herb Dean, he actually told Connor to keep his toes out of the cage, but Connor literally kept him in the cage and Herb Dean didn't do anything about it. And it is kind of messed up because at this sequence, around one minute and nine seconds left of the second round, 
Connor kept his toes in the cage again, but he was also keeping his knee up, blocking Khabib from getting into full mount. And the fact that he kept his toes in the cage, he was able to hold that position. And Khabib couldn't get into full mount. You saw he tried to, and Herb Dean didn't do anything about that either. Now that's kind of messed up. That really helped Connor in that position. That really made a big difference in how the fight probably could have went. And there was another point in the third round, around 3 minutes and 58 seconds, where Connor was again pressuring Khabib to the cage. And Khabib did that same tactic, move into Connor's left hand, force it out and redirect to get away from the cage again. But Connor, he went to switch stances and throw a lead left hook, which ultimately still played into Khabib's game. Didn't seem like Connor knew what Khabib was trying to do. Even after this was the third time he did it, one for every round. Khabib blocked it and redirected to his left again to get away from the cage, away from the pressure of Connor. And then we move here and Khabib goes and feints at Connor and then transitions into a double leg. He shoots in the open space. Khabib is not the best at shooting in open space, especially when he's getting pressured. And this is an example of that. And the reason why Khabib wasn't able to finish this takedown is because he did what he usually does. When he shoots, he doesn't drive. He shoots and gets on his knees, drags his feet, and crashes to the ground, and then continues the takedown afterward. It's not like a freestyle wrestler, an American wrestling style, where they shoot these blast doubles and they carry the whole way through. He shoots crashes to the mat, stops his takedown, and then reworks and continues to get it. Which makes it a lot easier for our opponents to defend the initial shot, which Connor does here, by pushing down on the head and sprawling on top of Khabib. And what Khabib is trying to do is, he's trying to back Connor up. Remember what I said in my pre-fight breakdown? If Khabib is shooting in open space, and he's not getting the takedowns, it's still working in his favor because he's backing the opponent up constantly with every single shot. And now look where they ended up. After the clinch exchange, they broke it up. Now look who's closer to the cage. This played all in Khabib's favor. And Khabib sticks Connor with a very fast jab. You could see the speed of Khabib is catching Connor off guard. Many times throughout this fight, even before this round and earlier in this round, Khabib was landing a lot of jabs on Connor. The jab of Khabib, people made fun of it in the Ally Quinta fight. He's catching Conor McGregor with it. Very fast jab. He doesn't telegraph it at all. Just shoots it from his shoulder. And notice Conor got closer to the cage. What does Khabib go for eventually? He goes and shoots against the cage whenever the opponent gets closer to it. Khabib parries Conor's lead hand as Conor is trying to post and create some distance. He breaks that away and closes in the distance behind it. Throws a right hand which catches Conor. Very surprising Conor is throwing no left counters. Seems like he's freezing a little bit. He doesn't know what to guess. He doesn't know what Khabib is going to try to do here. Is he going to strike with me now? Is he going to grapple with me now? Is he going to take me down? I'm close to the cage. I don't know if he knew he was close to the cage, but it could have been an option if he realized he was. And that could have all played in his head because now he has to respect Khabib striking as well as his takedown, something he didn't think about prior to the fight. So Khabib lands the right straight, doesn't land too hard, lands more to the forehead, and kind of looks to block again. He's trying to cover up on these shots, which is something he doesn't normally do. The only time we ever seen him do that was against Nate Diaz, when he started to get really tired. And that can also be a factor here. And Khabib shoots in for the double leg behind it into the cage. Working Conor again. And then comes the biggest punch from Conor McGregor. Very smart work from Conor McGregor here. He goes and shows Khabib his left hand. He twirls his left hand as if he's going to throw an uppercut. Then he leans to his right and shows Khabib his left hand as if he's going to throw a left overhand. He's getting Khabib's attention on the left hand. This is something he did to Max Holloway a lot. And he's leaning to his right and he didn't throw the left hand. What is he going to throw? Khabib takes the bait. Exactly what Max Holloway did. Khabib throws a jab. His left jab. Connor gets his head on the outside of it. Right uppercut up the middle. Notice Connor's entire body. His, his foot's on the outside. Everything's on the outside. Except for his fist. Connor is the master of this punch. And launches Khabib's chin up. And you can see Connor was looking to fall up with the left straight. Like he did to Max Holloway. But notice Khabib. He is very aware. Look how he moves his head on the outside. He was waiting for the left straight after he got hit. This might have been an instinct. Might have came from training. Or he just had all his senses there. He recovered very quickly from that right uppercut. And when you move a little bit later, Habib was able to move from the left hands, able to slip on the left hands. He got the timing of Connor's left hand completely. And it shows it here as well. And this is actually something I was mentioning in my pre-fight breakdown. Where I was saying, a great way for Habib to shoot in on Connor is forcing out his left hand and countering under it. But he has to attack Connor to do so. Very similar, almost the exact same thing. He did to Michael Johnson. And it happened right here. Khabib moves forward and throws the jab. Catches Connor slightly. Connor's moving back away from the punches. So they're not going to have any great impact. And Khabib goes and throws his right overhand. He's leaning over his legs. This is not the best form. You're getting off balance and you're overextending. 
and he's switching stances as he's doing it. Connor gets his head off the center line on the outside of the punch and looking for his left counter. He's knocked out and caught a lot of people with this punch. He's knocked out Ivan Butchinger with this sequence. He's caught Eddie Alvarez, knocked him out with a combination followed up by this punch. And Michael Johnson did the same thing to Khabib. Khabib threw a combination with his hands and Michael Johnson leaned to his left and went to throw the left hand to counter Khabib. Khabib ducks under Connor's left hand and ducked under Michael Johnson's left hand. The exact same thing happens. And he shoots in on Connor. He has the timing of that left hand of Connor completely down to a T. The biggest weapon of Connor McGregor. You can see late in the third round, Connor starts grabbing onto the glove of Khabib on the inside, not allowing Khabib to maneuver his hand onto the legs, onto the upper body, and change his grip on Connor for a takedown. I don't know what was going on with Herb Dean. I mean, he had to have seen it. Khabib told him multiple times in that sequence, Connor's grabbing my gloves. And Connor never let go of the glove. He had it the entire time. Herb Dean had to have seen it. I don't know what was going on with Herb Dean. Now something very interesting happens in this third round at the end of it. You can hear Connor says something to the extent of it's just business or it's business or it's fight business. Something in that neighborhood to Habib when they were breaking up. And that's when Habib started talking to Connor after. He starts smiling to Connor all of a sudden and he said, hey, let's talk. That is a very interesting thing for Connor to say. And they were close together. They were against the cage at the end of the round. And this is probably the best opportunity for Connor to say something to Khabib. What a lot of people are speculating is Connor's talking about the whole fight buildup stuff, the whole feud, and all that sort of stuff. It's just business. And if he is alluding to that, his mind got off of winning the fight. His mind got off of the fight. It got on to Khabib and trying to pretty much cater to Khabib in some way. That is a very bad thing to see from Conor McGregor. Sometime during the fight, or before the fight, Conor's mind got off the actual fight or actually winning the fight. Which a lot of people can point to Khabib breaking Conor after all this punishment. Conor being a little bit intimidated of Khabib before the fight or during the fight. Knowing that Khabib is taking this very personal. Doesn't want anything to happen after the fight. Wants Khabib to know... That this is all just part of the promotion. This is just all part of the business. All part of the fight game. To Khabib, when you see him smile all of a sudden after Conor said that. And before that he was very agitated that Conor was cheating. Khabib knows that Conor's done. Khabib sees Conor's not all in this. In some fashion. Either he has given up. Either he thinks he fears Khabib. To something with the mental game, it's not right with Conor. And Khabib sees it. And you can see when Khabib tells Conor, hey, Conor instantly turns around and faces Khabib to see what he says. And when Khabib stops talking to Conor, Conor takes his eyes off him. It's like he actually wanted to hear Khabib's response. But Conor here in the fourth round, he is exhausted. He is very tired. He's gotten so sluggish, so sloppy with his strikes. You see, he switches stances and he throws like almost not a desperate, but just a wide open lead left hook. Lunges at Khabib. Khabib barely moves, keeps his hand up, and gets away from the punch. And you can see how Connor lands the shot. Connor's always known for good balance. He didn't have really good balance after the strike where he crosses his feet. I've never seen Connor do that. He's always mindful of keeping the right balance, keeping the right position. And in this fourth round, every time Khabib threw a strike at him, Connor didn't counter. Connor didn't really have the best reaction to his shots. And this comes down to the fact that now he has to respect. Could be striking again. He has to mind the striking and the takedowns, and this is playing with his head. And like I said earlier, Connor is extremely tired at this point. He backs up to the cage, and this gives Khabib the signal to shoot in against the cage, shoots a double leg on Connor McGregor, trips out the leg as he's riding him on the cage, and eventually trying to pull Connor back. He has a body lock around him. Khabib is very strong in this position, pulls him back as he's tripping out the left leg of Connor with his own left leg. And Connor's holding on to the cage. He's pulling himself, not allowing himself to fall back. Another foul move. And he almost gets on top of Khabib and rotates around because of this. I mean, these aren't just foul moves. These almost impact the fight greatly. If Connor was just slightly quicker, he could have gotten on top of Khabib in full guard. But Khabib pulls him back, tries to get Connor's back, and he keeps the body lock. Khabib at the end of the day is very strong. He holds the position, but Connor is able to peel away the legs, especially the right leg of Khabib. But the body lock is just holding Connor down. I mean, Khabib is just way too powerful with his grip. And eventually gets the back of Connor and rotates around, elevating him with his legs. You can see Connor never hits the ground until Khabib rotates around 
And Khabib is wrapping around, pulling himself above Connor, and eventually gets into full mount. And then eventually Connor gets on his side, and Khabib's standing on top of him, and he's watching Connor. He's like, Connor, what are you gonna give me? You gonna give me your back, or are you gonna get me back into full mount? Connor goes and gives Khabib his back, and instantly Khabib goes for the neck crank. Connor completely abandons defense and completely abandons what him and his coaches were training for this fight, and that was do not try to stand up under Khabib. Fight off Khabib on the ground and then look for your opportunity to stand up afterward or grapple with Khabib a little bit more. Don't try to force a stand up and he did that. Maybe panicked a little bit, maybe ran out of options, maybe just ran on instinct, maybe already gave up. Conor McGregor crawls to the cage, left his neck exposed and Khabib just grabs onto the neck crank, doesn't care about the rear naked choke. Very tight and with the grip of Khabib this is very painful. I mean you do not want Khabib to get a neck crank on you. And then he just taps right away after. So excellent performance for Khabib Nurmagomedov. He just established himself as an all-time great. He's only lost one round in his entire career. That was this fight in the third round. I'm not saying that in my opinion, but on the official scorecards, Connor won the third round. So he lost one round in his entire career. He's undefeated. This is something not even Floyd Mayweather can say. And Khabib is just amazing to watch. I wonder what's going to happen afterward, but we will wait and see. So I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown, and if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you enjoyed my content, make sure to subscribe. For my next video, it's going to be my podcast, it's going to be on Tuesday, so I'll be looking out for that, and again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.